This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I am reading from Ephesians. I sat down, I'm very tired, but God played this verse in my head. So I have to read it to you. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. This is Ephesians verses 15 through 18. This is the sentence that popped in my head, what I just read. And I'll read it again. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Pat's two cents. Before I go any further, many people may not know what that word circumspectly means. Here's another word for it. Wary, leery, cautious, on the watch being very watchful and careful, being very skeptical. Check it out. All right. Mm, on the lookout. That's another good one. All right. Let's go back again. I'm going to read it one more time. Be patient with me. Just want to make sure you hear it in context. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understand, understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Listen, listen, listen. Pat's two cents. We go through life. In these last days, you guys, we are going through life literally sucking our thumb, hanging out with the buddies, hanging out with our homies, taking selfies. I feel pretty. We go through that. We, we sit in front of the, the idiot box. Sorry, that's the TV for some of you who haven't heard that term. And we're... Somebody's trying to call you. You're in a trance. Mm, okay. And what God is saying is we got to come out. We have to wake up and become aware. What is going on? There are a lot of things going on in these last days. And we're sitting up there scratching our butts and sucking our thumb or scratching our butts and picking our nose. Listen, listen, listen. Many of us get caught up with TV, with internet, game, 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 game. You got games over here, games over there. Games, games, games. I mean, come on. You've got selfies going on. You've got challenges, the, the ice bucket challenge, this challenge, that challenge. Everything's going on. You've got celebrities, and everybody is, is, is uh, paying homage to the celebrities in worship. They worship Beyonce, and they worship, I mean, all these different names and people and Whoa. So all the time we're all caught up in them and the sports, the Lakers and the Bulls and the Rockets and the this and the that. And we're like, but all the time, all the time, Satan is lining up stuff to pull us down with. And the reason we're not aware is because we are not being circumspect. We're not being wary. We're not on the lookout. We're not being watchful, careful, cautious. No. We're to, what do we do? What do we do? What are we going to do today? Where are we going, y'all? What are we going to watch? Yeah. What are we going to play? Everybody wants to eat, drink, and be merry. And while you're eating your life away, Drinking your life away, screwing your life away, partying your life away, 
playing your life away. Satan is steadily scheming stuff to take you and your loved ones out. And you know nothing about it. Because you're not asking God. You're not reading the word. You're not praying. You're not watching. You're not looking. Life is not supposed to be just an arduous task. I know that. You're supposed to have some fun, some, some lightening up time. But you're not supposed to sleep through your life. You're not supposed to be a couch potato in life. God says, wake up. Wake thou that sleepest. Let me read verse 14. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. Then he says, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Ah, so be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You, you have to know what God's will is. How do you know what God's will is? You ask. How do you seek his will? You read. You know, God is not going to lead you and hold your hand through your life. Not like that. He will lead you. There'll be times he'll lead from a distance and there'll be time, times he'll draw close. Usually he's the closest when you're going through hell because he's compassionate that way. But a lot of times when you're going through hell, you're not aware of his closeness because you're not consulting with him because you're mad at him. You're mad at him because your girlfriend popped you up upside the head. You're mad at him because your girlfriend cheated on you. You're mad at him because your wife jumped up with the kids and left you. You're mad at him because your wife left you. Your husband left you. Your children ran away. You're mad at him because your child's on dope. Instead of going to the one who can help, no, you're blaming him. That's how sleep you are. You don't even know. You're so in the dark. You don't even know who's doing this to you. You're sitting up there sucking up everything from the media. And the media is packing you full of poison, full of toxic, junky thinking, junky forms of love, junky sex, junky do whatever you want to do. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. And you are going for it, hook, line, and sinker. As, as Malcolm X said, said uh, bamboozled. Just totally bamboozled. And the sad part is you're like a frog sitting in a pot. You're so caught up in the games and the selfies and the entertainment and the parties and all of the nonsense. You're like a frog being dropped in a bucket of cold water. And you have no idea that Satan has turned the flame up. He's not boiling it quickly. He turns it up slowly. And while you're swimming around, we're having a party. Everybody's swinging. It's kind of warm in here. Well, we're having a party. I guess it's just going to get hot and steamy. And you're cooked to death. You're fried. Your life is fried. Your mind is fried. Your emotions are fried. Your money is fried. Everything. Your destiny has died. Because you're so busy playing in the graveyard. Seeking death. I, I, I don't get that. As Mariel in our church said. She said, God said that we are seeking death. We love death. We're lusting after death. What is up with that? Why seek, you know, you say you want love. You say you want peace. You say you want joy. You say you want to be alive. You say you want to be uh, full of substance and purpose and about something. But 
what you're seeking all that among the dead. Why seek ye the living among the dead? What is up with that? Hmm. Okay. Listen. Go to God. You're getting caught up. Go to God. Because what you're doing is you're going into self-destruct mode. You're so busy sleeping, playing, laughing, joking, screwing. You're doing whatever you want to do. Because you think God's going to be okay. But look what God said about that. Let me go up a little bit. Check this out. It says, for those of you who don't think you have to live a holy life, you can lean on his uh, mercy, you know, because God is, you know, he's cool. He's cool. He under, He knows your heart. Okay. And, you know, I mean, it ain't that big of a deal. He ain't coming tomorrow. How do you know if he ain't coming now? Listen. But this is verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but giving, but rather giving thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is an idolater, have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Mm, mm, mm. Now check it out. Verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. And look, that's two cents. You get vain words on entertainment. You get vain words on TV. You get vain words in certain types of movies. You get vain words in the music, baby cakes. And you get vain words all over the place in the bed. Now check it out. And from the drug dealer. Okay, listen. Mm. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not, be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes in darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Oh, come on now. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. I'm stopping there. But you have got to listen. Oh, I got to move on. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Ah, okay. Listen, I'm going to stop there because I know attention spans are short. Y'all can watch Beyonce 24 hours and not get sleepy. But when it comes to God's word, you can see a dog's tail wagging. And they can get a million views in a, in a day or two. We, God's word might take 10 years to get 100 views. Because the hunger is not there. This, this generation, is, it, there's a great falling away. Don't be part of that. You have no idea you're boiling in the pot that Satan has set up for you. Be very careful. Be cir walk circumspectly, not as fools. God bless you. That was all said in love, you know.